On the build show today, we're talking plumbing systems. I've got all the major plumbing systems that I've ever used in the 25 years that I've been a builder. And we're gonna fill these with water and see if any of these systems are more or less prone to damage with freezing pipes. I've been a builder for over 20 years and I've used all these different plumbing systems. On the build show today, we're gonna to fill these all with water and test the theory that I've heard. The theory goes that a copper pipe exposed to the cold outside will split in freezing weather, whereas a PEX pipe will actually expand without breaking. Is this really true? We're gonna test and find out. So first of all, if you're watching this in the north, you're probably snickering right now. You can't imagine putting a water line all the way to the outside of the house and that thing not freezing. You've either got, if you're building new construction, something like this product. This is Aquar's house hydrant. This is what they call a frost-free hose bib. So now the shutoff is actually way inside the wall cavity. Or you've got one of these, but you've got an inside shutoff somewhere in the house. Maybe in the basement, there's a, a knob you're gonna turn and you're gonna drain out the, the water in the line with an air release valve. And then that hose bib going to the outside is just filled with air in the winter months. However, in the south, I've been remodeling and building here for over a dozen years. It's really typical, even on new construction, to see this, a copper pipe going all the way to the outside. And then you're gonna cover this with some type of frost uh, covering, maybe a, a plastic or a uh, uh, foam gasket that's going to keep it insulated during the cold weather, which we typically only get for a few days at a time. So here's what we're going to do with this test. I've got half inch and three quarter pipes in all the major styles, copper, CPVC, and two different types of PEX. And we're going to fill these to the top of the water. Now I chose a hose bib for two reasons. Number one, I'm curious to see how it does because of course we see this a lot. But also, I couldn't cap both ends of the copper. You know, when we sweat on a fitting, the copper pipe needs to be empty in order, in order to sweat on that fitting. So what we did on the top here is we sweated on a male fitting, and then we've got a female hose bib that comes on. That way I can fill this with colored water all the way to the top of the fitting. Then we can close off that gate valve, and I'll know that this water is filling all the way the length of the 16-inch pipe. I'm also curious to see whether a sweat on fitting will do any different than this fitting. This is shark bite fittings, which I've talked about in a previous video, obviously a hot topic. So each one of these styles I did with both a standard fitting and a shark bite. For instance, CPVC, this is a, uh, um, a solvent fitting where you're actually gluing that fitting on. And again, we put a shark bite on there, both half inch and three quarter. I'm curious to see with the extra volume in a three quarter inch pipe, if there, that extra volume leads to more expansion of that water when it freezes. I'm also curious to see what the difference is between these two styles of PEX. This is a Vega PEX, which is PEX B, and I've also got the same half inch and three quarter in Upinor PEX. Now, Upinor PEX is PEX A, a little more flexible. I wonder if that makes a difference for us. And the fittings also work a little differently. On this PEX A, we've got an expanding fitting. I talked about this in a previous video. So I wonder if that means that PEX A with that expansion fitting is gonna take a freeze better. So let's fill all these with that water and we're gonna put them in a freezer overnight. Now I've got a battery in here uh, in my Big Larry flashlight that I'm hoping is gonna last with some lithium uh, batteries. I've also got my GoPro with my extended battery pack. We're going to do a time-lapse video, so hopefully we can actually see these. But let's pick this video up tomorrow after these pipes have had a chance to be in the freezer for 24 hours, and let's see what happens. All right, it's been overnight since we put these in the freezer. Exactly 20 hours ago, we dropped these in there. We had a GoPro going overnight, so we could check that GoPro footage. But man, look at this. Right away, we can see that the copper lines have some crazy failures. Look at this three quarter inch, that green tinted water blowing out of that split right there. We can also see that the shark bite connector on the half inch copper, man, it absolutely blew that thing off the top. I don't see any damage immediately to the PEX or the CPVC, but I am seeing some green tinted water on the freezer on the bottom. There's even some on the side up here. How did that happen? Maybe when this copper spilled, it blew water all the way up to the top. I'm not sure, but let's go check the GoPro footage and then we'll thaw these out and have a look. All right, so here's the GoPro footage that was inside the freezer overnight. Let's see what is going on here. 
Now we've only got a 21 second. We took a picture every 10 seconds and it made it into a movie. So here we are about halfway. It looks like all the pipes are about the same. I don't see a lot of movement yet. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I'm seeing a pipe move. Let's see, two more seconds. Oh, and we got a split. <laughs> yes, it worked. Let's rewind. I want you to I want you to focus on a couple things. So as I press play, look at this pipe right here, first of all. Watch this guy. See what happens back here. I'll just put my mouse right there. Look at that thing just grow. That shark bite connector on the half inch copper is just being absolutely pushed out. And I think this three quarter inch copper is also doing the same. Let's see if we can watch the last couple seconds of this too. It's grown as well. Not quite as fast as the half inch. That's interesting. I thought it would have been the three quarter inch pipes that had. And then this is three quarter copper and this split happens in a split second. So it must have happened in a burst. And also watch how the pipe jumps. So look right here when I press play. This is this is pretty awesome. Boom. That thing split open and the pipe goes. Looks to me like the PEX pipes didn't move a whole lot. Um, let's switch this now back to the... Uh, I'm going to pull these out of the freezer and let's go back to the desk and see what we can see. All right, so the GoPro footage from inside the freezer, that was pretty cool. The next test I did here was I rolled out some paper towels on the desk here and I brought the pipes directly from the freezer so they could thaw on top of the paper towels. Remember I filled these pipes with some green tinted water before they froze and my thought was when they thaw maybe we'd be able to see where some of the leaks are. Now certainly the paper towels are most green over here on the copper side of things but interestingly enough there's a little bit of a stain on nearly or really every single one of these up by the faucet. I'll get into that in a minute. But first, let's review each one of these pipes and what happened to them. So first, half inch copper. So half inch copper with a sweat on fitting. Boy, this one failed pretty dramatically. Look at that big bulge and a giant split in this one. Think about if this was in your basement and the water pressure was on. Oh man, you'd have a ton of water spilling into the house. Pretty dramatic failure. That's happened, uh, I'm sure, a million times across America over the years. The other one that was interesting is the shark bite connector and the half inch copper. This one pushed out the copper, the shark bite connector was able to grab onto the pipe, but the entire fitting was blown off. Wow, that was dramatic. Next, when we go up to the three quarter inch, similarly, this one uh, had a pretty good size split up here with the sweat on fittings. And again, the shark bite connector blew off. Now this time it blew off, the connector is intact. It looks like you could reuse this connector. If you take a close up look here at the fitting, it looks like the stainless teeth on the shark bite connector actually dug into the copper, but weren't able to hold back the pressure and like nails on a chalkboard, it actually blew off the back. Very interesting result. Okay, and running over to the CPVC now, these look like they actually stayed intact. Both the uh, solvent fittings with an end cap and the shark bite look like they're in real good shape. We do have a little bit of staining by the faucet, but actually every one of them had that. I think this is probably an inherent flaw in my test by putting hose bibs on here uh, because I believe this Teflon tape in the hose bib, maybe I didn't quite get these tight enough. I don't see any splits or cracks in here. I think maybe we just had a couple of drops, a couple drips that maybe froze and were coming out from that, uh, from that connection. The other interesting thing about that is it would actually leak outside of the house if you really had a hose bib on. So you wouldn't see the dramatic damage. Um, so CPVC, generally speaking, did pretty well. Now I pulled the shark bite cap off the CPVC as well, and same thing. Look how this thing dug in. Now this cap was not blown off. I had to take this off with the uh, three quarter inch shark bite removal tool. And this one, we don't have the nails on the chalkboard. This one dug in as if it dug its heels in and it stayed on. It was able to resist that pressure. I'm assuming because those stainless teeth were able to get enough bite onto the CPVC. This one stayed on, looked great. Okay, going over to the PEX now, we've got Upinor, or pardon me, I've got Vega PEX, which is PEX B first. This is probably the plumbing system I've used the most over the last 15 years or so. This is a crampon style fitting. This one looks fine. I don't see any problems with that. I've got all the water still on that one. Uh, similarly with the shark bite in there, I can actually see uh, an air bubble in there. All the water's still in there. Just a little bit of drippage up here, but 
Seems like it did fine. Same thing with the three quarter. And then I pulled this one off again with the remover tool. The, the water didn't do this, I did. And again, the shark bite teeth dug right in and was able to grip tight and the three quarters both did fine. I didn't see any splits. Last up is PEX A. This is Upinor PEX. And similar to, to the other PEX, this one seems like it did just fine. I don't see any problems here. I pulled off the sharp bite connector here manually, again with the uh, removal tool. Same thing, it dug right in, it did not move. This one looks like it's in great shape. And if you look at this three quarter pipe, uh, it bent a little bit, it looks like, by just the water pressure in there. But man, those fittings, that is an impressive fitting. I don't know if you saw my other video I made on this, but basically the, the way that these end caps go on as the pipe expands, you put the fitting in and the pipe contracts around that. I think that ability to expand is really gonna make PEX and particularly this PEX A a good choice if you've got some freeze thaw issues. What are the takeaways from this? You know, why do we do this? Of course it's interesting, but I think the takeaways on this are if you've got a second home, a vacation home, a rental property, a mountain cabin, something that, you know, certainly you could maybe drain down the water, but what if there was still water in the pipes? What if someone left the house suddenly on a rental and it was freezing weather? You know, I think if you had pecs in the house, you could survive that pretty well. I'm not saying that the whole house would make it, but just in these little 16 inch pipes, we had no problems, very impressive. Copper on the other hand, you better put a frost-free hose bib on or a, a spot where you can shut off the water to the outside and then drain down the pipe. Because just in these little short 16 inch seconds, we saw massive failures in the copper. Does not mean the copper is a bad system. Copper is amazing, a very high end, a great water delivery system, but not a lot of option for freezing copper without a big failure happening. Guys, I hope you found this as interesting as I did. I thought this test was really, really fun. If you're new to my channel, we publish every Tuesday and every Friday. I'd love to hit, have you hit that subscribe button below. We're chasing down 100,000 subscribers here on The Build Show, so I'd love to have you be among those few that hit that subscribe button right before we hit 100. And Merry Christmas to all my, my followers who've been following me, guys. It's been a great year. I'm so thankful for your followership and for watching these videos. They're fun to make, and I appreciate those comments that you guys make below. Hit that subscribe button, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.